it's so interesting to see and reflect each one in our own experience what we've done in order to look for relief this sense of freedom relief stability and all the wrong places you can say that we were looking for that and for sure i can look at my own experience and it's just the amount of time and effort and energy and hope and fear that was involved in trying to get the relief, you know, really get it. And of course, living human life, many, many times along the way, there was a sense of relief. Uh, there was a sense of seeming stability, but it was so fleeting that also with the relief and the stability came a sense of, ah, no, 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 I know it will go away. I don't want it to go away. Whether it was in the meditation cushion or in the retreat or in some kind of a therapy session and um, or whether it was in a, just in a more spontaneous moment like that where I didn't have many thoughts or I didn't have negative thoughts, and what happened to me is that I usually, when I had this like aha moment, all, all the moments afterwards were trying to recreate that moment. What, how, did, how can I feel it all of the time? How can I go back in time and feel this sense of relief that was so strong? So I did it in many, like you can say, practices. And, and of course, what is more seemed to be more conventional practices like finding relief in relationships, intimate relationships, sex, um, parties, um, success, and so on. But here, I, there I was, and the relief wasn't constant. It was very random, and I had no idea how to, how to come back to it. I had no tools or the know-how, the clear know-how and the support to, to have it in everyday life. When we wake up with depression, when uh, we do something and we feel guilt afterwards, how can the relief be obvious there? No idea. To me it was, and I know that that's the sense for many people, that relief or freedom are to be found only in special circumstances and for sure they are not part of negative thoughts, emotions and sensations, right? We read the books that we read, we do the practices that we do and it really points out to the fact that if we are thinking something is wrong with us. So all of us are losers all of the time because we are thinking all of the time. Or, or if we have uh, negative uh, thoughts and emotions, that means that we are failing in our practice. Doesn't make any sense. And you see many people trying to think positive, and it's really trendy these days, thinking that thinking positive will lead us somewhere. It, le it does lead somewhere. It leads to exhaustion and neutralization. Because uh, we are constantly trying to rearrange the flow of our experiences, the flow of our thoughts, emotions, sensations, what we call, uh, in Balanced View, we call data streams. The data streams of our own awareness, our own open intelligence, that they are perfect as they are. We are perfect as we are. There's nothing to avoid in our experience. These are things I've never heard about myself or anyone else. I constantly heard, something is wrong with you, whether it's your ego, your karma, your pain body, your psyche, your psychology, your past, and the list goes on and on. And then we can fix you if you breathe in a certain way, if you think in a certain way, if you move in a certain way, and if you don't think, move or <laughs> breathe in a certain way. It's like, okay, thank you for the tools that left me totally confused. I have no idea what to do, especially in challenging circumstances, especially for someone like me, you know, ordinary human being from the Middle East that has all kinds of thoughts and emotions. I don't have only positive emotions and thoughts. And the times that I was so uh, rigorous and I managed to have no thought and I thought it's such a great um, achievement for humanity, you know, I'm not thinking. The thought was, I'm not thinking. What's the big deal, my friends? It means nothing. It's empty. It's, it's not a goal in and of itself. So what we are introduced here in Balance View, it's the stable nature of our mind that is always on. It's not recreated or created by our own thinking or emoting. It's the basis of everything. Everything, what's looking through your eyes, what's sensing. It's always there. We know it. Instinctively, we know it. But the direct introduction to it is very key and important. 
to introduce ourselves very directly to the nature of our mind, awareness, open intelligence, are synonymous, stop thinking for a moment. What remains when we stop thinking? Openness, alertness, the power to know? This is open intelligence. And now thoughts, emotions, data streams continue to flow on by. That's natural occurrence, like the breeze flowing in, the, in space, in air. But what we can see and recognize that regardless of whether we are thinking or not thinking, open intelligence is what allows us to know that. To know that. It's in the basis. So we can, it's reliable. We can rely on that. We can rest as open intelligence for short moments, repeated many times, until open intelligence becomes obvious at all times. This is the practice of, of balanced view. Whether we are thinking or not thinking, open intelligence is present. Most of our life went into emphasizing our data streams, being a victim of our own experiences, describing, 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 telling the story of our life from a very, very narrow point of view, that says that we are a victim, yeah, because I think negative, because that happened to me, because this and that, and, and analyzing that. Anyone here try to analyze? Mm -hmm. Have you ever reached to like the final conclusion of analysis? Mm -hmm. Usually the final conclusion is like, I'm such a mess, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so we pay people to, to confirm that, yeah, I'm such a mess. But there's not like ultimate conclusion. Another ultimate conclusion about ana analysis is that it's never ending. The more I dig, the more I find. The more spam in my inbox. <laughs> right? Here, with the choice of relying on open intelligence, we have the opportunity to relax body and mind right here and now, no matter what the data stream is. You don't even need to have a positive one or a spiritual one or very pleasant one. Whatever it is, can be tiredness, exhaustion, irritation. That's where we can experience the inseparable relief of open intelligence from the current data exactly as it is. And that's really important to see directly, not like, hmm, aha, so interesting. Let's think about it a bit more. No, we have the practical tool to recognize it in our own experience rather than conjure up another philosophy that keeps us so tight in a in cage of description. You take a short moment and you see freedom in immediacy of perception, no matter what the perception. Complete perceptual openness, like vast sky. The data streams are the dynamic energy of our open intelligence. Like breeze is inseparable from air, or the color blue is inseparable from sky, we cannot make them into two things. And then, you know, like these days, many people are practicing awareness, which means it's like a cat watching a mouse. I'm aware, I'm aware, I'm aware. I know exactly what's going on. Where the relief? Doesn't matter. I, I'm aware of everything. So you see people really uptight, trying to be aware of everything. And that's, it's not a goal in and of itself. It's not a goal in and of itself. The relief, the stability, the freedom, the power to be of benefit, that it's, that's the release of all of the tension and uptightness, living an uptight life from our own choice. You know, not because we want to be mean to ourselves and others, we just didn't know better. So being introduced to open intelligence is like, welcome to reality, my friends. And now we see that we have a most important choice in every moment. Do I emphasize my data streams or do I rest naturally as the potency of each here and now? And you can experience this relief right now and again and again and again. And for me, it was amazing and still is amazing. Because when I realized that and I understood, you know, even intellectually, wow, what I've been putting myself to every morning waking up with a certain sense, sometimes positive, rarely, <laughs> and, and many times negative. And every morning it was like, what's wrong with you? Why is it there? What did you do wrong? thinking about it, trying to breathe it away, trying to meditate it away, trying to blame someone. Okay, it's because of that, it's because of my parents, it's because of my past, it's my ego. Just morning, 6 a.m., and I'm already like writing books about my misery. <laughs> and here I had a choice when I was introduced to open intelligence. T 
take a short moment suddenly you know the drop down menu there was like relax take a short moment and I was like able to experience relief that I never experienced before while I had the negative experience it was like really is that true or was it a random glitch in the matrix or something you know the cat going twice like in the movie or something but then I tried again and I tried again and that's how again confidence in open intelligence and balanced view really provides the practical tools and takes away all the nonsense that is so available everywhere we look takes away all the nonsense and give us the direct introduction and the direct tools to utilize it and see results in everyday life. We speak with people every day who are suffering due to the victimization of their own data streams and they're looking for relief. And some people have been trying for 20, 30, 40, 50 years seeking for the nature of their mind and when we ask them, do you have results? They say, yeah, in the meditation room, in the therapy room, but when I leave or close the door, it's gone. So that, is this the expectations that we have about human life, about our life, to, be, to confine relief to just one room, one moment? Here we have an opportunity to experience it in, with everything, positive, negative, neutral. And that's how the balanced view comes to support, really, to see that through the process of one of our major primary trainings, the 12 impulses, we have the opportunity to really refresh all the limitations, to really see, have a clear look into what's real, what's working, and what, what is just belief systems and assumptions about ourselves, you know, the cage of reification, of emphasizing our data streams. And for me, this process was completely life-changing and not just that life-giving. I felt that when I did it, there was like a, a massive reset button to my life. It was like, okay, cool, now I know how to live. And also after the 12 empowerments and during and after, there's complete support. The, the short moments, of course, but that's not always easy because the habit of being a victim of our data streams can be really strong. So we have the media and the trainings, the many trainings that Candice writes, the talks that are available the trainers who are there to share their experience as normal human beings recognizing open intelligence and then the community of people who are shining example of what's possible not not pretending to be aware not pretending to be open intelligence benefit look at me you know let's have a selfie beneficial selfie it's just like everyday life itself that's how we are that's how we are meant to be spontaneous clear potent undistracted by the ups and downs of our thinking so you know well, whatever the situation lying aw laying awake at night and having no idea what to do rather than thinking or not thinking about it take a short moment of complete relaxation like yesterday I woke up at 5 a.m. here's my opportunity to rest as open intelligence I can think about it, the reasons why it's there how can I bring a short moment and another thing, I just pr press play and listen to Candice's talk. So if I'm awake like that, at least I can have some education in the nature of mind rather than thinking what's the problem with me, or why I'm so emotional about leaving places. You see, it's so simple. The self-release of the here and now is like this line drawn in space. We're thinking, 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 but here the line drawn in space, leaving no trace. Space is unaffected. Complete mental and emotional stability is our birthright. We are not victims of our circumstances. This is made up. That's conspiracy theory for those who are into cons conspiracies and theories at large. So what comes about like that, and especially in the beginning, what I noticed, it's really important to put and place the focus on myself. Gaining confidence in open intelligence for seeing by that, you know, the 12 empowerments and the continuous support of the four mainstays, seeing that actually I'm not a broken, desperate individual with problems. I'm a benefit creator. And this is something that comes about gaining confidence gradually in open intelligence. And with that, the benefit and know-how of how to use all of this energy for the benefit of all, which includes also myself, myself becomes obvious. So you can really give yourself the time to settle into this new reality and by that you will already see, but you will see even more clearly 
how can I use this energy that was first of all, you know, in the beginning, in the beginning, before the 12 empowerments or before the introduction to open intelligence, was focused on fixing myself and thinking how can I be cool, sexy, positive, spiritual, enlightened, uh, tall, <laughs> and without Israeli accent, um, you know, surrounded by cats and a lovely woman and with four children and everyone recognize what I do all the time and love every step that I take and I'm always in India because th this is the only place where I can find spirituality and I speak fluent Hindi. <laughs> okay, so when I have all of that in place then I can be happy, suddenly I see, okay, I can start fresh right here and now. I can rely on open intelligence regardless of all of these internal or external circumstances and that's a great benefit. One short moment of open intelligence is tremendous benefit for all comparing to a lifetime of contrived benefit of one trying to do good things in a contrived way. So even if you take one short moment right now, it's a wonderful humble contribution to the benefit of all and it's forever giving. It continues on. You see, you gain confidence and complete assurance in that. And it doesn't take one million lifetimes to get there. <laughs> you know, we sometimes read and we think, oh yeah, maybe in one million lifetime I'll, I'll find relief. Oh, no, it doesn't take one mi million lifetime. It takes one short moment. One short moment of open intelligence.